Hi everyone, it's Bells. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my February wrap up. It was a weird reading month. I was reading a lot of books that just weren't for me. And I had two books that were awesome. And I ended the month at a really strong place. But I am curious as to what you guys think if you've read these books as well. Okay, let's bring on the books. I'm gonna start really quickly with a book that I DNF'd just to like get that out of the way. I DNF'd um, Foundry Side. Foundry Side, I was buddy reading with my lovely friend Fran. <sighs> God, and I think it's only because we buddy read it that we lasted as long as we did. What is it about? It's a fantasy about this thief who basically steals like a thousand year old magical item. They're trying to escape with the item, keep it out of the hands of this person so that the whole world doesn't, you know, go up in flames. I think the magic system is really interesting. I want to start with that. A little convoluted, but like I love the concept. It's more sci-fi than it is fantasy. But the way that this book was written made me want to pluck my eyes out. All of these characters, including our thousand year old character, sounded like teenagers. Everyone sounded exactly the same. I like literally didn't know who was talking half of the time. The narration, I counted three different instances in the same chapter where the narration went and things were dot 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 different. What kind of narration is that? What kind of description is that? In a high fantasy where literally your bread and butter is the description of your world, how on earth could you possibly be so lazy in your writing to put something like that in the narration? It felt like a second draft. It felt like it needed to an editor to help it. Um, and the characters were the biggest issue. I didn't care for the lead. She was a person who it felt like things happened to her and she reacted to it rather than being an actionable character who goes out and does stuff. She was very passive. I find that happens a lot when men write women without the input of other women. Oh, and our other protagonist is pro-cop. The book is pro-cop. Look, y'all know I don't want to read about cops. I am very picky about the content that I take in where cops are the protagonist because I am not here for the presentation of cops as being like a force for good in our world. I've never experienced a story that decided that cops were the, the solution to every issue in a city. So that was like the nail in the coffin for me. I, I can't, I just like, I'm not here to read books like that. But honestly, it was pretty boring and it was really low stakes. Even when characters died, it was pretty lackluster. So yeah, we stopped reading that one. I can see the appeal of it. I think it kind of leans toward like that new adult genre. Again, that's like just not a book for me. We're gonna move on from that one. The first book that I finished this month was White Ivy by Susie Yang, which was on my like most anticipated books to read in 2022. This was good. It's an anti-hero story. It's about this girl who's objectively a really bad person. <laughs> she lies to people that she loves in order to be successful and get what she wants. And that's the story. I think it was really cool to experience a female anti-hero. I love that we are writing stories with women as complex characters that aren't necessarily always the good guy, but they're not portrayed as like the bitch. They're not a stereotype. They are just a full person who's just like not a good person, makes bad choices. The writing on this one like caught me right away. Within the first paragraph, I was hooked, which is awesome. That doesn't happen a lot. Usually it takes me a chapter or two to like get into a story. At the end of the day, it is a romance. Like it's a really, fucked up, very bleak <laughs> romance. Our character is wholly unlikable. Like she's kind of a shitty kid and you can understand it, but you hate this woman by the end of it, even though you understand her, which I think shows really good writing. I gave it three and a half stars because I, I thought it was really successful in what it wanted to be. I just kind of wish there was more to it. Kind of like watching a train crash. You can't bear to look away, but you also like didn't enjoy the ride. If you're interested in reading books about complicated women, I think this is a really good solid choice. Also, if you like romances, like if, if that's something that you like, this is a really fun twist on it. And she sucks 
and it's so cool. The next book I read after that was The Road by Cormac McCarthy, which I also gave a three and a half stars. So this is like a dystopian story. It's about a father and his son walking along the road, trying to get to civilization, find the good guys, basically avoid the bad guys. We don't know what happened. It doesn't really matter what happened. It's a story about survival. It's so thoroughly devastating. The sheer magnitude of what these people were going through made my heart ache. There's not a lot of detail. We don't get a lot of character information. It's not a traditional story. It is speculative fiction. We've learned I don't love speculative fiction. I think it is smart in its simplicity. I think it's devastating in its simplicity. Look, I like slow paced novels, but this was like so slow. <laughs> And I think that was the point. Oh my god, I just like, I couldn't get into it, man. And it was really repetitive. I think if you like speculative fiction, you'll enjoy the process of reading this book, the experience of reading this book and getting to the end. The style was a little monotonous, but again, I think that was kind of the point how survival is very monotonous. It's a journey that I'm glad I took. I'm glad I read the book. This was a recommendation from my friend. It's one of his favorites. So yeah. That was the road. Next, I read Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I really wanted to like this book. I did not. I gave it two and a half stars. Again, like this is a book that I think other people would really like. So I don't want you to be like totally turned off of this book because I don't love it. It's inspired from African culture and the world itself is gorgeous. The detail of it is beautiful. I loved the world. I loved the themes of this book. It's honestly just kind of generic. It's pretty repetitive. By the time I got to the end, I was pretty bored. The characters are not like super complicated. What you see is what you get. Um, they were pretty stereotypical. The most interesting people of the book were introduced in the last 100 pages, which I thought was just absurd. Like they brought in such a cool group of people, but we didn't have any time to get to know them. So like when the climax happened and people start dying, I like couldn't really care because we haven't spent any time with them. I don't feel like I got enough time with the characters that I cared about. And I got way too much time with characters I didn't want to know so much about. There is also, and the biggest flaw of this book, because there is a fucking romance that was really boring and just not interesting, not engaging. It was quite predictable. I think the same character development could have been captured in a different way. I just don't feel like it did anything new in the sense of like a fantasy, which I think is really unfortunate. If Tomi Adeyemi writes an adult novel, I will absolutely read it. I loved the message. It was clearly a conversation about police brutality in the modern age, but presented in this fantastical world and I thought that was really lovely and I just wish the actual story like the actual story with the characters had more substance to it had as much substance like as the world around it because I wanted it to be really good and I just didn't and I don't know if that's just because of the nature of young adult books or if it's because the story just like wasn't super substantial I know people really like this book Again, so this is just not for me. This was a very disappointing month. It's a real shame. After that, I read The Alchemist. I gave this 2.75 stars. This is a book I read when I was younger. I liked it. I don't didn't remember anything about it. It's like basically a self-help book about God. It's about this boy who like goes on a quest for his own personal treasure and like grows as a person because of it. And I think if you like self-help books in general, you'll probably like this. I, I don't like self-help books. The message of the book is that God will help you achieve your personal legend if you do everything you can to achieve it. The biggest issue of this book is that only men seem to be allowed to have a personal legend. The introduction of a character Fatima is a desert woman. Thus, she is uh, quote unquote content to wait for her man to come home after achieving all of his hopes and desires. She is a desert woman, that is what women do. There's no talk about her personal legend, even her worth. And there is a gypsy woman at the beginning of the story and she is also only there to provide help to men going on their personal legends. It really rubbed me the wrong way. I did feel that motivation that came from like, you should all go and like find your personal treasure. But I felt like I kind of just endured the rest of the story. It didn't 
doesn't feel satisfying. There's clearly some fundamental issues in his messages to people. I think its execution is repetitive and quite boring, but I am not the audience for this book. I think if you like this book and you find it to be motivational, if you find it gives you that boost that you need, that's awesome. I am not here to discount that in any way. I've got one more book that I read before we get to like the good ones. So the last book that I read was a nonfiction. It was Bright Red Screen by Marilee Strong. If you've been watching my last videos, you've known I've been trying to read this for like two months and my tarot cards attacked me and told me I had to finish it. So I did, I finished it. This is different. This is a book for me. I love psychology. I like nonfictions. We have to keep in mind, this was a landmark book for its time. This was written by a female about the psychology behind self-mutilation. This was like kind of the first book of its kind and it was widely critically acclaimed and I think it does still apply to a certain degree. It's written as psychology for the masses so even though it's covering a lot of really complicated topics it is really digestible which is awesome. Unfortunately it really suffers from out-of-date information. So this book came out in 98 and the preface at the beginning came out in 2009. The preface is, is basically like a lot of this information is out of date and we don't cover some things that we should have. But here's the rest of the book. This was a very dark read. This was very difficult to read. It is very graphic in its description of self-mutilation. I think that was important for the story, but it was really difficult. If there's a person in your life who you need to find a way to connect with, who does do this, I think this is probably a good place to go. Honestly, just because it gives a nice insight into the actual people. There's a lot of stories in this book and I think that is where it shines and that is where it stays relevant. The actual psychological research, I wouldn't trust. It's very out of date. It was not a waste of my time to read it whatsoever. I'm glad that I read it. So that's this guy. Okay, so. We went through all of the books, all, all the books that I did not enjoy. I had a five-star read this month though, everybody. This book felt as though it was written just for me. Like if I sent out a list of things that I wanted in a book and someone wrote it, it would be this book. And that would be The Ballerinas by Rachel Kalpak Dale. Guys, I don't know what it is. I think this was written for a very specific group of people and I happen to be one of them. So after a whole month of reading things that were not for me, I finally found one that was. This book is so much more than a nostalgic premise for me. It is full of complicated and witty and funny women. It is full of politics and microaggressions and commentary on ballet as a whole and on our world as a whole. It is commentary on being a woman. I think that Kopik Dali does a wonderful thing here where she uses ballerinas, uses people who are on show, their bodies are their job, using ballerinas to explore what it means to be seen like as a whole person and how women often experience being treated as objects by men. I think this book illustrates really well the different versions of objectification that women go through. This is a debut novel, this is a debut book, and as such the writing isn't like perfect. Some of the transitions between the present and the past are like a little choppy, some of the structuring is a little bit bizarre. I literally don't care. <laughs> It accomplished everything for me that it needed to accomplish. I think this will probably go down as one of my favorite books just because of the, the very particular and specific impact that it had on me. But I think that this appeals to women everywhere. I think this is clearly written for women. I'm already looking forward to like when I get to reread this and re-experience it. Also, it was like kind of a thriller. It's just like contemporary fiction. But there were some wild plot twists in this book that I did not see coming from a mile away. And that was really fun. I think if you liked uh, like Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, you'll probably like this. Just in the same idea of how like the politics of movie making were prevalent in Seven Husbands and the politics of like ballet are prevalent in this one. The last book that I read in February, I'm so sorry. I'm supposed to read this in March and I'm not gonna talk about it for very long because I already filmed the part of it for my March wrap up. Um, it was The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. And if you just watched my uh, TBR for March, this is the first book I was supposed to read in March. I'm so sorry. But what you should know, it was a great middle book. Middle books are very hard. So good, in fact, that I had to find out how the trilogy ended. So I, I bought the third one. <laughs> 
and I'm currently this far into it. So you'll get the rest of the review on that at the end of March. Happy reading, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this video, to this little wrap up. I hope you had a lovely month of reading in February. I hope you read books that were written for you. I hope you feel like I feel about the ballerinas, that you have books that you enjoyed. Please tell me what they were. I'd love to hear. Have you read any of these? Did you enjoy any of these? I know someone recommended, someone in YouTube recommended Foundry Side to me. Um, and I'm so sorry I didn't like it, but I'd love to hear why you did. Have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you next time.